Hi and welcome back. Today I'm in the shop. It's uh, it's Monday and uh, not got a whole lot going on with knives right now. I'm waiting on some supplies so I thought I'd just pedal around. I don't know if deer's out. No, nope. <clears throat> deer's not out. They, they come through earlier but I figured they'd probably be out playing again. But anyway, today like I said, I have been just, I'm, I placed orders and now I'm waiting on material to come in. I've got a a knife that's commissioned uh, over my, from my trip to Atlanta. Was Atlanta good for me? No. 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 Atlanta was not good for me at all. I sold two neck knives and five sets of handle scales. That's it. That's it. Now, I'd been happy if the neck knives was a half a million dollars a piece, but they weren't. So, anyway, but I did, uh, I did trade a knife for a, uh, for a set of elk antlers. And the fellow's supposed to cut them up and send them to me. So hopefully he will. Because the knife's already, he's already got the knife. So anyway, hopefully, you know, I told him what I, what I give for my license by the pound. And he said he would get them weighed up. So any shortfall, hopefully he'll stick. He's a micarta salesman. He's got micarta and uh, G10, stuff like that. Handle scales. So, hopefully he'll make the difference up in my carta. I've got quite a bit, but I can always use more. Now, uh, Saturday was actually slower than Friday, if at all possible. I don't see how, but it was. They just, I don't know. I don't know how much it was, 35 40 dollars just to get in the door. So, I don't know, this, this economy, but it's, it's just, it just flat, flat out sucks. So, but anyway, that beside the point, even people that, uh, that I knew, or it just met down there, one guy didn't sell anything. No knives, he brought kitchen knives good looking kitchen knives didn't care much for the handle shape on them but he brought some good looking knives and he brought a bunch of cutting boards his daddy-in-law made the cutting boards and his daddy-in-law is the one that makes the cutting boards but he wasn't married so he sent them with his son-in-law and daughter he sold no knives and five cutting boards so that was nothing for him the, the money went to his father-in-law for them and they was one feller uh, sold, a, got a commission on a sword, and the feller stroked him a check right there for six grand for as a commission for a two-handled sword instead of one handle. Yeah, I believe that's what it was. But anyway, that was just happening right around me. Now, the only person that I seen selling anything at, at all in there was people that were selling knife supplies uh, that and since I have a 1x42 uh, the true grit that I get some belts from occasionally they didn't even bring any they said it's just a very rare thing I don't remember if Pops brought any or not maybe I didn't even ask Pops about it I know they got they got a few but not many they got a lot more uh, believe it or not they've got a better selection of 1x30s than they do 1x42s now that was a surprise at Pops at the store and so anyway like I said I got a commission off of the deal so I mean it's not going to make up for any of the shortfalls it's not even going to break um, make my table money back I mean you know, that's six bills itself 
and uh, well, six bills and change. By the time I got done with taxes and everything else, they add on to you. So, uh, and then want you to pay taxes on everything. You know, that's taxable. So, got that to look forward to. Anyway, I sent them stayed a couple of bucks and be done with it because that's all I made, just enough for a couple of dollars worth of taxes. That's it. The state's cut anyway. Ugh. But like I said, I've got a commission on it. Out of it, so and it's going to be a fun build. I'm going to go through and, and document it for him and for everybody else on it. Now, I hadn't, I hadn't documented any of the layout of patterns. I wanted them, I wanted them to be approved, and then I'll just go back and redraw the, everything at, at his camera, on camera. So, or I may just show them to you. But anyway, that's the way that goes with that. Now Saturday, like I said, Saturday was slower than it was Friday. I had a whole lot of people that took pictures and oogled them and everything else and uh, but you know that's all they done walk by with their hands in their pockets now Sunday come rolled around I didn't film at all Sunday I was after Saturday at Friday and Saturday of filming all day long I was I was deflated and I mean deflated to the point I did I just wanted just to pack up and go home and uh, I had some people come by Sunday uh, one fella interviewed me for a little bit and he said he'd put it on his YouTube and get it bounce and I might get a bounce of you know subscribers uh, it's been a week or so and i am not got just one or two new subscribers and mainly they was the people that I was talking to that I was talking to giving cards so you know you could like and share this and get me a little more notoriety but uh, Alan K the season one winner of Alone has one of my knives he stopped by and talked to me for a few minutes with uh, his friends and everything and he said his knife was performing flawless just like it's supposed to holding it holds a real good edge for a long time now I, like I said I didn't film any of this so and I'm not going to lie to make anything look better or whatever but it just happened and that was it Neil's come by, Neil's Vandenberg come by, he didn't stay, and he just walked by and I just said hi to him, and that was it. And that's all he was going with. So, I didn't get to see uh, Will Selter, he wasn't there. He failed his uh, master's thing right off the bat. They hand, when he handed him his dagger, they immediately kicked him out the door. Said no, nope. Didn't have flutes. Well, his definition of flutes is correct, but it's not what the ABS masters want. They want flutes, and he give them flutes with wire in it. He and well, I think they robbed him on that one. I do. I really do. I didn't see the knife, but what he showed in his video, I feel for the fella. I really do. You know, and as far as me sitting in judgment, I have been judged by people to get into a get into the knife guild. The only thing that they found wrong was one of my knives. The uh, the pins was sticking a little high on the horn handle horn softer than that and one said he could he could help me with that now I know how not do, to do it on a horn handle so anyway with that I was critiqued and passed I mean if it it does everything I say it 
that it will do regardless I had one fella he said I'll take a chance on one of your knives I said you won't be taking a chance on a knife it'll do everything I tell you it'll do and he come back the next weekend and told me he said you can't buy this knife back from me he said it is absolutely everything that you said it was and more he said I have been working with it I have picked up everything coming and going cut it from leather to to sisal or, or seagrass whatever for uh, hay hay bales he said I've cut everything with it everything he said I ain't sharpened it once I ain't touched nothing and he still peel a hair off of you I said well told you uh, it'll do everything I say it'll do and he liked it so much that he's bought eight knives from me personally he has bought eight knives now he gives some of them away as presents and uh, he bought six and paid almost full retail on them and I give him his seventh knife and he come back by and bought another one that he was going to keep and he mix matched the sheaths telling him he could as much my fault as it was his um, so he got a knife he got a sheath he liked he got the knife he liked well since the knife wasn't made for the sheath or the sheath wasn't made for that knife it didn't fit real real good and he lost it a couple of times and then he lost it completely and he said, and he said the only thing I can think of is uh, that when he come back I asked him about if he's still like he said I lost that knife he said the only thing I could think about is you know you might offer a little bit more retention you might want to think about that I said well I said that was the mix match when you bought wasn't it he said yeah I said well I usually do I said but the cheese is made for the knives and I told him, I said, if you go home, just to make sure, is put wrap them in saran wrap, plastic cling film, and put them back in the sheath and wet the sheath with 91% rubbing alcohol. And then take you an antler or a spoon or something like that and rub it down around the, the handle part of it and rub it in there and form fit it. And let it dry they'll stay in he said okay so when I give him that tidbit um, I handed him another knife and he said what are you doing I said you lost that one I said here's your another one to replace it you buy eight knives for me and come in and and you're honest about it and everything else I'm subject, to, well, subject to give you another one, that, them little knives. That's what it was, was a little knife. Like the patch knives. So, they're, they're not, uh, I try not to overprice them too much or anything. Although I had one fella at the blade show tell me that he made them in Wisconsin up there uh, at their little uh, pioneer days or whatever, rendezvous they have with the wagons and everything else up there and said women buy a lot of them and said he sold his for like 250 dollars a piece and I said would you want to buy some for half that and take them up there and sell them <laughs> and I said I'll give you 50% profit on if you can sell them for 250 and he just he didn't offer I mean he didn't want to take none of them with him so you know some people just like to talk some people actually do what they say they'll do so anyway with that now the knife that I'm gonna be uh, get back on subject uh, at hand other than Atlanta Atlanta like I said for me was a fiasco I mean all the inventory all the hours all the product I've used and everything else like that and the amount of gas that I burnt down there and back and the food that I bought for me and my son and uh, 
yeah, he was my employee, so, and I was taking him away from his other stuff, so I paid for everything. He didn't pay nothing. No gas, no nothing, no eats, no nothing. Whatever he wanted, he got. So, which I knew he wouldn't want much other than stuff to eat, you know. I figured if he wanted a shirt or something like that, I'd buy him a shirt from somebody, but I didn't figure on buying him a, a knife somewhere. I figured he could, he'd have one of them if he wanted it, one of mine which he already has one or two of them. So. And he knows more about knife, what the name of knife I don't know, shapes are and everything. So with that, I just I just do geometry on them and I mean, and try to make them where they, where they will do and fit the way that I want them to do. So that's the beautiful thing about custom work. I get to take something that's in somebody else's imagination as they describe it to me and draw it out and just give them a rough drawing of it and we start critiquing. Adding little touches here and little touches there, maybe here, maybe there. You know, say you know, texting back and forth and everything else like it. Maybe you change your mind on the handle material. Maybe you want bone instead of micarta. Or maybe you want micarta instead of bone. Maybe you want wood. Or whatever, you know. Uh, maybe you want the blade a little bit wider. A little bit narrower. A little bit thinner. A little bit thicker. You know. All of this is good to get hashed out before you put your effort into actual tangible material because it costs money everything that you do costs money a few texts back and forth don't hardly cost anything especially you know on your cell phone it just don't really cost that much extra they're going to charge you x amount whether you text somebody or not so with that so we've been texting back and forth on it he wants a design I give him a design. Oh, let's see. What did I do with it? It's laying here somewhere. I'm, I've done it. I'll show it. Uh -huh. Okay. Here it is. Okay, here's the knife. Did he come up? That. that. Now, we had a knife. He wanted the knife like that, and I give him a drawing, and he said maybe let's add a a pommel hammer to it. Okay, there it is. I told him I said I cut this slot in there. I said now this slot does not have to be in there, but it's a better it's an option right now. because once it gets all heat treated it's going to be uh, well not impossible but it's going to be pretty close it'd be diamonds and carbides to drill holes and everything else like that now he wants this knife to be a survival knife kind of sort of and he wants an ostrich sheath for it but I'm not talking about just a normal ostrich sheath he wants one that you could slap a grizzly bear back into hibernation with. So I'll give him that. I've got the I've got the leather that's stiff enough to handle what he wants. I have the the ostrich, and it is uh, it's black or it's gray, but it's. It's the same, same I've been using. I've ordered it a couple of times in black, and it, it still it shows up and it's like it's gray. So kind of not like an elephant color, but uh, it is definitely grayer than it is black. But you can see the black. And what I'll do is I will take beeswax. I'll take my own blend of water sealant that I have right there. 
that I do most of my, not all of my sheets, but most of them, I will do in, in this. It's, uh, yeah, I've got it up like that. Now, this is not went rancid or anything. It's got a halfway decent, pleasant smell to it. Halfway decent. It's not the best smell. I mean, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to wax my mustache with it. But anyway, uh, it's made out of four ingredients. This uh, this wax, this wax here is uh, made out of four simple ingredients, and it's after lunchtime. So you've probably had three of them today. Probably, and uh, already that you've eat, so and you don't know that you've eat them. That's the thing about it. But that's the way this stuff is, and uh, so it's all natural. I don't want to eat it, but because it's this is dirty, I've been rubbing everything in the world with it, and it lasts pretty good bit. But I don't. I'll buff it up. I'll uh, I'll put it on the, the uh, ostrich to make it a little tougher. So when I get the steel, I'll get it cut out. It'll be a stock removal knife. Uh, hands are hurting, wrist is swelled up, so the hammering is almost over with for right now. Till I get this something done with it. So whether I get my wrist shortened or get the ligament fixed, pulled back and put in its place. If I get it fixed, they said they said six weeks. If I they cut all that stuff out and take it out and shorten my arm shorten my wrist by about three quarters of an inch, that um, you know, it'd be six weeks. If I done went the route with the ligament, it'd be six months before they'd ever let me touch anything with my right hand. Because ligaments take a long, long, long time to, to get there, to, re to heal and attach back properly. So, anyway, with that, that's what I've got. I'm going to end this video. I know it's a darn long one, but I thought I'd add that, that, uh, you know, I done in Atlanta. And will I go back? Yeah, they've already sent me an application for next year. Uh, they put me in the little room, and there's a lot of people didn't know they had a big room, and there's some that stumbled in there didn't know they had a small room. So, till next time, this is Bobby Shields saying, God bless.